Well, Tom, a lot of producers in Oklahoma right now are thinking about weed control in uh, beans and other, other plants across Oklahoma. But whenever they control the weeds, they may be inviting some insects into the fields. Right. Um, the, the nice thing about uh, some of these herbicide tolerant uh, crops and that new technology is it uh, really opens up some opportunities to do some insect, uh, insect control. But the key is you still have to know what's out in the field ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, uh, up in, say, northeastern Oklahoma, I was getting calls about uh, grasshopper problems up there. And they were wanting to know about adding an insecticide into their uh, tank mix with the round, Roundup, in that case, um, to control the grasshoppers. And it really does uh, provide an economical opportunity to control grasshoppers, especially if you're catching the grasshoppers at, uh, while they're still young, mm -hmm. uh, so they can't move around a lot. The key is once, once you spray a field like this and you kill the weeds, which mm -hmm. you saw there's a lot of weeds that are dead out right. here, the only thing that's left for the grasshoppers to eat is the crops. So it's really important to go out there and, and get, get an idea of what's out there ahead of time. So if you have the opportunity, go ahead and mix the, the herbicide and then also the pesticide. Right. Now the key there is uh, you've got to check the labels to make sure that they're compatible, the, the tank mixes are compatible and everything. But there are a number of different insecticides that uh, are registered for grasshopper control in, a, in soybeans or, or herbicide tolerant corn. Uh, it just, it, like I said, it makes an economical opportunity to take care of two problems at the same time. Why, why, are, uh, why are grasshoppers such a pest? Well, uh, in, they, they just seem to love Oklahoma weather probably more than any of us do. They love hot, dry weather patterns mm -hmm. like we're experiencing now. So we usually see them uh, really build up in huge numbers about every, you know, eight to 10 years or so. But Well, and then grasshoppers can also invite blister beetles too. Yeah, they can. I, it was really odd. This year, there, I was getting lots of calls about blister beetles and uh, th they're tied together because the blister beetle larvae, the young of blister beetles, feed on grasshopper eggs. So a lot of times when you start seeing grasshopper numbers go up, you'll also see blister beetle uh, numbers go up. And of course they can be a problem with defoliation and they can really be a problem with, uh, with uh, hay, alfalfa hay, and uh, uh, horse, horse uh, owners really have to be very careful with you know, blister beetles coming in and feeding on the, the hay crop. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to another field and uh, and go sample some because it doesn't look like we have. Yeah, too many. I think I think they've done a good job out here with this field, but uh, I uh, I want to uh, demonstrate the technique for estimating grasshopper numbers. So uh, I know a couple spots where at least there's a few of them around. We can show show how easy it is to to count. That's great. Well, let's go do it. All right. Well, Tom, and another thing that they like to eat is corn. That's right. They'll, well, they like to eat any number of crops. So you can see here, there's a little bit of feeding damage oh, from yeah. grasshoppers that yes. they've been eating yeah. here. Uh, they love to feed on the ears. Um, these things, they're an equal opportunity insect. They'll feed on just about any crop that we grow here in Oklahoma. They're kind of the goats of the insect world. Well, yeah, that's a good way to put it. No offense to goat right, owners yeah. <laughs> everywhere, but yeah, they do. They like to eat a lot of different things. They, they like a varied diet. Okay, well, let's, let's look for some uh, grasshoppers right now. All right. The, it's a to, to estimate grasshoppers along a roadside ditch uh, we have to do it visually because oftentimes they, they get out of the way before you can go up and catch them so uh, a good technique is to just learn how to estimate about a square yard area somewhere eight to ten foot in front of you mm -hmm. and you pick that spot and you start walk as we start walking um, I just pick that spot and, and count the number of grasshoppers that are jumping in and out of the area that we're walking on and uh, you do that in about five or six spots uh, along a field and, and get an estimate of what kind of grasshopper numbers you have uh, on the outsides of the field. And you can make an estimate then as to whether you need to uh, treat the outside rows or treat the whole crop or whatever. But uh, it just depends on the densities that you're finding. Is there a better time of day to do this? Uh, you know, I, well, the better time of day is when it's the most comfortable for, you know, it's sunrise, <laughs> right. you know, any time yeah. after the, you have to be able to see them. But um, I usually like to come out 9 and 10 in the morning, somewhere in there when it's still fairly cool. Uh, the grasshoppers are still pretty active. Um, <clears throat> towards uh, the really heat of the day, a lot of times they'll, they'll go and just rest somewhere. They kind of quit feeding and they'll, they'll just go and rest for a while. So 
um, probably mid morning's the best time to um, be looking for them. Okay, Tom Royer, thank you very much. You bet.